Hello. We're going to do a multi-view orthographic drawing today and uh, talk about how it is a useful part of an iterative design process. So I'm going to use a red pen where I would use a pencil and a black felt tip pen where I would use a black felt tip pen. <laughs> so I'm going to start by um, dividing up my page. That'll leave room for um, for multiple uh, multiple drawings to all fit on the same page. Um, and then I'm going to locate the first drawing down in the lower left corner. So I'm going to start by just boxing out the overall dimensions. I'm not trying to draw the the, the actual object yet. I'm just laying out the sort of dimensional constraints. Uh, we call these our construction lines. This will become more important in just a second as I bring these construction lines all the way through the drawing. Then I would actually just draw the the shape that I'm designing. So there is the um, front view. It's always good to have a title below your elevation. Remember it's front view for products or mechanisms. Elevation for the built environment, buildings and landscapes. Oops. Right, uh, just because the different professions have different histories, let's say, keep it at that. Um, so once I have a front view of, of my drawing, before, this is step one, draw your front view, okay? So now let's, let's, let's draw the next two um, ortho, two-dimensional orthographic projections. This is our first two-dimensional orthographic pro projection. Now I'm gonna run extension lines or construction lines across the page horizontally from the key features, right? Uh, same thing here, I'm gonna run them vertically. Right? That saves me from having to do a lot of measurement. If I'm making something up, I don't have anything to measure from. But by doing this, I keep all the drawings together. They're all describing the same three-dimensional physical object. This is the key to drawing in orthographic projection. Yes, anybody who say so. Maybe the key to the whole plan, get it? Got it, good. And because unlike a three-dimensional view where we can show it, most of the, 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 the thing we're designing in one drawing. The orthographic, the two-dimensional orthographic projection relies on the collection of several drawings. So um, if I need to transfer um, a dimension like um, uh, the top of the cup here, well, I pulled it up here but I can also reflect it all the way over here. Uh, I do that by finding the center point in the four boxes that I drew right there. Um, and now you can guesstimate. I'll show you with a triangle because that way it is accurate. But um, so you can guesstimate uh, the 45 degree angle and just draw a line through. If you have this type of a triangle, um, you can use it just to be that much more accurate. So that 45 doesn't actually connect to anything on here. It's just a line of reflection. Um, we're going to do the same thing uh, on the other side. So we have two lines of reflection and I'll show you how to use them in just a second. So let's um, Go ahead and show those. So, and I'm 
remember the red is pencil so this is all something that would just be lightly on the drawing so those are those are my um, 45 degree angles I'll often just draw them by hand uh, by eyes close enough with these initial design sketches but now we're going to reflect this dimension here which intersects this line here and this line here no that's right it just is so much higher than I initially drew <laughs> didn't look right all right so um, notice we got a square again up here so we've taken this square we've reflected it through uh, we've taken this dimension uh, and we've extended those lines and duplicated the dimension here now I can do the same thing with these lines as they intersect um, as they intersect this diagonal right so I'm just pulling these dimensions all the way across and then I can pull that dimension down and now I've taken this box here and I've reflected it around my orthographic to this side over here. So now I can draw the side of the cup that I'm looking at from over here um, and simply that's this side. side view or elevation right now because I'm drawing this to scale I can put a little note to that effect as well one to one um, and so then that's my second elevation the third one up here that's going to be my top view again just hold it here and turn it just like if you're holding an object. If you're designing an object, just imagine rotating the object in space. Um, and uh, in this case, because I um, created these, these boxes here, um, and I have those center lines, I know that the um, this is a circle thing. I usually lay out my circles before I draw them. Um, Once there's a circle on the page, you can react to it. And um, boy, that is a thin rim, isn't it? So we'll show a very thin double line. Now, because the um, because it rotated this way the handle is here notice this line tells me where the end of the handle is um, and then uh, if I wanted to I could pull the width of the handle from here here and here here it intersects the line here and here that's the width of the handle where it, where it meets the cup and um, it simply looks something like that. Label, top view, also known as plan, one to one. Okay, so that there, step three, three is the axonometric. Most often drawn as an isometric, which is a 60 degree um, axis, which is a uh, axonometric with 60 degree axes. So, I would start by just drawing those axes. Let's go ahead and drop one on here. Um, and then I can just approximate it like so. Those are my 
the axes for my orthographic. Now I can, uh, if I'm doing, if I'm doing, if I want to do this um, in a measured way, I can create a box that's what did we say three and a half inches. So I can create a box that's three and a half inches on a side, um, and draw the cup within that box. In other words, if it's one and three quarters, tick three and a half, tick one and three quarters, tick and tick. So, um, so I just measured three and a half. So let's take and draw a parallel line down here and a parallel line up here. And then let's draw a parallel, oops, parallel line here and a parallel line here. So that is to scale with the rest of these. That's the box that defines the outer edges. If I draw verticals here, um, uh, those verticals will be the um, the sides of the outer box. Notice it takes up a lot more space on the page um, than drawing your your orthographics. It also takes a lot more time. So we said it was two and a quarter tall. So if I I go up two and a quarter, So this is the total box, and I'm running off the top of the page. <laughs> and I'm running into my picture on the side. Just a second. Okay. So, um, there we go. All right. So uh, uh, once you've created the box that you're drawing fit that your drawing fits within um, you can run a center line through the box and this is for a circle and the top circle of the top circle of the cup will be the ellipse that runs through the four midpoints of the lines on the top of the box Got a lot of lines on the page, so let's go ahead and um, uh, leave that really rough and move on to step four because step four is what happens when you start to get too many lines on the page uh, or you've made some decisions you're not happy with in your design process. So, step four then, or you're starting to draw up off the top of your page. <laughs> Step four is to lay down another layer. I don't quite got it right here. We'll have to fiddle with the bottom a little more. Um, if you've got something where you pretty much nailed it, don't bother redrawing it again, unless you're really doing a final version where you've got all of them uh, and you're bringing all of them up and that's going to be your final drawing. So because, you know, I went to the harder one first, I know that this isn't going to be my final because I've got some weirdness in here that I'm going to fix, which means that um, when I, uh, that I'm going to hold off on redrawing this until I've solved the problems in this drawing here. So, um, uh, at any rate, that's, you know, th this would be, uh, the isometric one to one. This looks bigger than these, but um, if I set this in front of my drawing, you can see it's just about spot on. Well, maybe I drew it a little, a little too big, but very close. Um, so that's all there is to it. Step one, two, three, four. Um, you're going to end up with a very nice set of drawings. Um, ideally, your titles would align, so this here should go down, so it's 
on here. Title, title, title. Um, if you'd like, you can bring these boxes all the way through. I guess you'll want to bring them here. Uh, and ultimately, that's going to be your, your multi-view orthographic drawing. And that's your, your complete multi-view orthographic. All right, I want to resume now with one last drawing. That would be the third iteration in this case. It might be the fifth or tenth if you're figuring out your thinking as you as you draw. Uh, the more you change your ideas, the better. The more you use these tools to facilitate, facilitate and make facile the act of design, the better. And I might take a very uh, dark uh, point there, a very wide point, and hit the profile line. So that's the use of three line weights then to to help your design drawing to really pop as a three-dimensional object. Notice I'm just doing it where my drawing meets the meets the empty space beyond the object depicted. Um, and then of course I might uh, if you have a, a drawing pen, add a little color. Now, uh, before I put a label on this, I'm going to shift it down, uh, and that's so that all of my drawings line up nicely within the four square box. So let's go back to my medium nib and we'll go here. Isometric. D cup, one to one. And that's all there is to it. So there's your multi-view orthographic. Let's go ahead and add, just because it gives it that extra polish. A border. And let me just slide a clean sheet of paper under here so we can see how it turned out without all of the underdrawing underneath that particular view. So uh, 
there is your multi-view orthographic drawing of a teacup.